we spoke about <laughs> Velcro a few weeks ago. Like it, it's called biomimicry. We take it, yeah. it, often it happens intentionally. Like often it happens intentionally, but we just take things from nature. Yeah, and mm. a lot of, a lot of the times, nature will find the simplest way to do something. Now, don't that don't think that the simplest way to do something necessarily means either the best way mm -hmm. <laughs> or the absolute simplest way you can think of. What I mean by that is that it will use the resources that it's got yeah. to, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not going to, like, when it comes to evolution and all of that sort of stuff, you're not going to have necessarily an overly complex way of doing something. If there is an easier way of doing it that requires less energy and you already have all the sort of stuff to, you know, all the apparatus to make it. And also, I think what you're getting at there is that the simplest way of doing something also depends on what nature's already done. Mm -hmm. So nature is not going to undo a bunch of stuff and then go back to first principles and redo something. It's yeah. going to do it the simplest way or one of the simplest ways based on where it's already got to. Yeah. Um, which means that you can make that you can get these sort of weird solutions that there would actually be a much better solution. But because it's working with the, what it's already built, mm -hmm. it's a it's the best solution okay. with the apparatus it has. For example, let's think about bats, right? Now, is a bat's wing necessarily the simplest way to make a wing? Perfect. No. Make your all your fingers really long and your <laughs> skin really thin <laughs> and webbed between them. Maybe is that is that the simplest way of making a wing? No. Or are birds' Could wings be. the simplest way of making a wing, where your your arm gets all messed up and jacked up and your fingers become long and they, they go like this and bones fuse together and and you got this or an airplane wing or, or an you airplane just have a wing. shape that exactly. manipulates air as it or passes a paper over. airplane wing exactly right mm. now these That's are simple. all varying degrees of simplicity with no genuinely yeah. these are all varying yeah. degrees of simplicity with wings now we could point to one of them and say that's the simplest way but it's not the simplest way necessarily because to make a paper airplane wing from a bat wing from like what a, you know what a proto bat would have had yeah. you would have had to made we would have had to have made a lot of changes but to make a bat wing from a proto bat just make its fingers long. Also, very interestingly, Ooh. when you were saying about um, evolution won't necessarily find the simplest way of doing something, mm -hmm. a really great example of that is that evolution hasn't got a lot of examples of, for example, like you say, like motors, like mm. like which happens with a, a helicopter, but it also doesn't have a lot of examples of wheels. And 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 that's really interesting. And there's a load of studies on like why, how, whether a, a wheel could have naturally invented, and, and it's. I can't remember exactly why, but there aren't many. There are examples of motors like on the tiny scale. Mm. We have little little biomotors that happen yeah. very, yeah, on a very, very small scale. scale. Yeah. But on a large scale, there aren't really natural motors. That's something we genuinely seem to have invented. Well, there's a reason for that in, in that wheels require... <sighs> wheels would require for something to be fully... Like a full rotation yeah. and for something to be kind of detached, right? Yeah. That is kind of difficult to do in nature. Now, I think we've spoken about this before, but in His Dark Materials, uh, Philip Pullman's novel series, The Golden Compass, if you've seen the film, yeah. the books that that's based on. Now, there are these sort of, I guess, not interdimensional, but extra dimensional beings, beings from another universe, let's say, um, that are kind of like elephants, but they've, I guess, evolved on in a completely different world, a completely different planet, completely different universe. And what they do is they hook their feet through these big seed pods that have holes in the middle and they they essentially ride around on wheels yeah right there's these like super intelligent elephants that yeah. super intelligent for elephants they're slightly less intelligent than humans um and they use like they sort of hook their feet through these like little seed pods and use them as wheels that's like a biological wheel yeah. but the reason that a wheel one of the reasons that a wheel is really difficult to evolve is that it needs to be a wheel would kind of need to be separate from the rest of the body and then that's difficult to maintain but and could it not be like an owl's head that can rotate 360 degrees could have owls' heads on both sides of your body. I think as, as they well. can't like continually. Yeah, I don't think they can continue they continually. Rotate. Rotate. Those well, can just those, th 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 what it means right, is that okay. a, an owl can just like turn it can its go head. all the way. It can turn right. its head entirely. It can do around one around. rotation, but you need to do multiple for it to be a useful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. and owls can rotate their necks a maximum of two hundred and seventy degrees without breaking blood vessels or tearing tendons. So that doesn't mean that they oh, can gosh. spin freely. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. You don't really see free right. spinning yeah. things in nature because yeah. if you think about it. How the hell are you going to get energy to it? So you could you could potentially do it if it's let's say something like keratin, like hair or nails, yeah. and you grow it out and then it detaches and then yeah. it's sort of like it's sort of dead. That's fine, but then it would wear down. How yeah. do you sort of grow that? Oh, yeah. You need a blood supply to something to give it energy and you know an, yeah. an oxygen wow. to replenish it. To replenish it. Yeah. And if something's going to have a full rotation, you can't you, you it, it can't have a blood supply. 
So yeah. that's one of that would be why you can't sort of do that in nature. That's so interesting. Another theory I read as well, th- th- which is probably supplementary to what you've said, is that w- roads are required for wheels. You can't have wheels on grassland, really. They're not as effective as legs. Mm, yeah. Or flying. Yeah. And so, yeah, you need to like, sort of manipulate the surface in order to have wheels, really. Yeah. 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 Well, th- there you go. So there's like, obviously, this is... So it's getting more into evolution, but I find this Sorry. all really, no, no, no. I find this all really interesting. I find this all really interesting. I think that you've you've kind of hit on it there. You don't have the selection pressure for wheels, yeah. by which I mean there. There's not an opportunity. Yeah. So yeah. wheels aren't don't confer an advantage. So there's no selection pressure for you to have wheels instead of legs, especially considering to get to wheels, you you can't just wake up one day and there's a chicken with wheels. Yeah. You need to have like sort of individual chickens that have closer and closer and closer to having wheels <laughs> and it, like sort of at no point before having a wheel are well, you going to have is there going to be a benefit a helpful thing yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so there's no selection pressure there but yeah. also just physically speaking it's it's biologically very very difficult to to sort of develop right so interesting yeah there we go oh, that's great it's well, great anyway, that's that tangent over audience <laughs>